In the future, it won't be an act of faith. The most serious charge is that Apple overprices its products. The most compelling reason for most people to buy a computer for the home will be to link it into a nationwide communications network. And in the meantime? Maybe the merging of the telephone and the personal computer. 我们用 AI 呈现了乔布斯在一九八五年的这段采访。在采访中，我将扮演当时的记者给出问题，所有的回答来自当时的真实记录。而乔布斯在一九八五年对个人电脑、智能手机、未来科技等话题给出了自己的判断。我们甚至可以从这些观点中呢，看到他对 iPhone 和人工智能等技术的卓越远见。We survived 1984, and computers did not take over the world, though some people might find that hard to believe. If there's any one individual who can be either blamed or praised for the proliferation of computers, you, the 29-year-old father of the computer revolution, are the prime contender. It has also made you wealthy beyond dreams. Your stock was worth almost a half billion dollars at one point, wasn't it? I actually lost $250 million in one year when the stock went down. Oh, you can laugh about it. You know, my main reaction to this money thing is that it's humorous. All the attention to it because it's hardly the most insightful or valuable thing that's happened to me in the past ten years. But it makes me feel old sometimes when I speak at a campus, and I find that what students are most in awe of is the fact that I'm a millionaire. When I went to school, it was right after the '60s, and before this general wave of practical purposefulness had set in. Now students aren't even thinking in idealistic terms, or at least. Nowhere near as much. They certainly are not letting any of the philosophical issues of the day take up too much of their time as they study their business majors. The idealistic wind of the '60s was still at our backs, though, and most of the people I know who are my age have that ingrained in them forever. We were going to say guys like you and Steve Wozniak working out of a garage only ten years ago. Just what is this revolution you two seem to have started? We're living in the wake of the petrochemical revolution of 100 years ago. The petrochemical revolution gave us free energy, free mechanical energy. In this case, it changed the texture of society in most ways. This revolution, the information revolution, is a revolution of free energy as well, but of another kind: free intellectual energy. It's very crude today, yet our Macintosh computer takes less power than a 100-watt light bulb to run, and it can save you hours a day. What will it be able to do 10 or 20 years from now, or 50 years from now? This revolution will dwarf the petrochemical revolution. We're on the forefront. Computers are actually pretty simple, and the point is that people really don't have to understand how computers work. Most people have no concept of how an automatic transmission works, yet they know how to drive a car. You don't have to study physics to understand the laws of motion to drive a car. You don't have to understand any of this stuff to use Macintosh. How about some concrete reasons to buy a computer today? An executive in your industry recently said, "We've given people computers, but we haven't shown them what to do with them. I can balance my checkbook faster by hand than on my computer. Why should a person buy a computer?" There are different answers for different people. In business, that question is easy to answer. You really can prepare documents much faster and at a higher quality level, and you can do many things to increase office productivity. What about the home? So far, that's more of a conceptual market than a real market. The primary reasons to buy a computer for your home now are that you want to do some business work at home, or you want to run educational software for yourself or your children. If you can't justify buying a computer for one of those two reasons, the only other possible reason is that you just want to be computer literate. You know there's something going on. You don't exactly know what it is, so you want to learn. This will change. Computers will be essential in most homes. The most compelling reason for most people to buy a computer for the home will be to link it into a nationwide communications network. We're just in the beginning stages of what will be a truly remarkable breakthrough for most people, as remarkable as the telephone.、Uh, specifically, what kind of breakthrough are you talking about? I can only begin to speculate. We see that a lot in our industry. You don't know exactly what's going to result, but you know it's something very big and very good. Then, for now. Aren't you asking home computer buyers to invest three thousand dollars in what is essentially an act of faith? In the future, it won't be an act of faith. The hard part of what we're up against now is that people ask you about specifics and you can't tell them. 
A hundred years ago, if somebody had asked Alexander Graham Bell, what are you going to be able to do with a telephone? He wouldn't have been able to tell him the ways the telephone would affect the world. He didn't know that people would use the telephone to call up and find out what movies were playing that night, or to order some groceries, or call a relative on the other side of the globe. We were warned about you. Before this interview began, someone said we were about to be snowed by the best. We're just enthusiastic about what we do. But considering that enthusiasm, the multi-million dollar ad campaigns, and your own ability to get press coverage, how does the consumer know what's behind the hype? Ad campaigns are necessary for competition. IBM's ads are everywhere. But good PR educates people. That's all it is. You can't con people in this business. The products speak for themselves. Aside from some of the recurrent criticisms that the mouse is inefficient, that the Macintosh screen is only black and white, the most serious charge is that Apple overprices its products. Do you care to answer any or all? We've done studies that prove that the mouse is faster than traditional ways of moving through data or applications. Someday we may be able to build a color screen for a reasonable price. As to overpricing, the startup of a new product makes it more expensive than it will be later. The more we can produce, the lower the price will get. How about people who bought Lisa and Apple III, the two computers you released prior to Macintosh? You've left them with incompatible, out-of-date products. At the rate things are changing, won't Mac itself be out of date within a few years? Before Macintosh, there were two standards, Apple II and IBM PC. Those two standards are like rivers carved in the rock bed of a canyon. It's taken years to carve them, seven years to carve the Apple II, and four years to carve the IBM. What we have done with Macintosh is that in less than a year, through the momentum of the revolutionary aspects of the product and through every ounce of marketing that we have as a company, we have been able to blast a third channel through that rock and make a third river, a third standard. In my opinion, there are only two companies that can do that today, Apple and IBM. Maybe that's too bad, but to do it right now is just a monumental effort, and I don't think that Apple or IBM will do that in the next three or four years. Toward the end of the 80s, we may be seeing some new things. And in the meantime? The developments will be in making the products more and more portable, networking them, getting out laser printers, getting out shared databases, getting out more communications ability, maybe the merging of the telephone and the personal computer.